Hi everybody, this is Jack the Rambling Raconteur, and it is National Poetry Month here in the U.S., and I just finished reading the poems of the late Tang, or Ta'ang, it's in that great uh, Green Bar <laughs> Penguin classic, and this was an absolutely fantastic poetry anthology. It's set in uh, the last hundred years of the Ta'ang dynasty in China, and it's, uh, it, it, it's sort of according to this translator regard is like a golden age the translator is ac graham and it was absolutely fantastic it has selections from uh i think like seven different poets seven or eight poets uh from about 100 150 year span and the the poetry is just absolutely astounding the imagery is fantastic the sensibility is really interesting um there is not always the same emphasis on sort of love that, that, that dominates in uh, so much of Western poetry tr tradition. <coughs> that idea of, um, of romantic love is, is, is present in some of these poems, but it's not primarily always about that. There's often these ideas about human relationships, about seeing a friend or seeing a, a family member after a long time or realizing we haven't seen each other for a long time. There's, of course, a great emphasis on nature. Uh, people who have, have enjoyed the, the romantic poets and that emphasis on like the beauty of nature, what we can find in nature, the vitality that's there, uh, would probably really enjoy the poems in this collection. So I wanted to just give a couple of examples that show, and, and this will be sort of in a semi-chronological order. So from Tu Fu, Flower in the leaves, only as heaven pleases, from Yangtze to brook, the same roots of stone, red cloud of morning's shadow likenesses, the cold water on each touches its scar. Easy, Yang Chu, to shed your tears, exile of Chu, hard to call back your ghost. The waves in the wind are restless in the evening. I put down my oar to lodge in what man's house? And, um, you know, it, it's just beautiful imagery, but also this sense of movement, of Tu Fu moving. Uh, who's he going to? You know, there, there's there's so much show but don't tell, and I love that. I love that in poetry, and I loved that throughout this volume. What I was doing was reading uh, each poet I would read <clears throat> one a day. So I didn't read the entire, even though it's like 170 pages, I didn't read it through in one day or one weekend. I took uh, about one a day and worked through, or if there, was, if there were a number of selections, I would read one or two in the morning and then another one or two around lunchtime and then another one or two in the evening uh, to really just be able to, to spend time focusing and getting some perspective on that poet. Uh, from Lee Ho. <clears throat> Here we go. The white glare recedes to the western hills. High in the distance, sapphire blossoms rise. Where shall there be an end of old and new? A thousand years have whirled away in the wind. The sands of the ocean change to stone. Fishes puff bubbles at the bridge of Ch'in. The empty shine streams on into the distance. The bronze pillars melt away with the years. And there's just this idea of, of cycles, of beauty, of, of this eternity and this expanse, like a moment within an expanse. And I love that. I love that, I think, in some of the poetry traditions I found in China or Japan. And... This poem seems emblematic of it. Uh, I, I, as I was reading the introduction, it seemed like this Tang late period was sort of this. It was a different period for the po uh, for the poets and for the for the poetry to the tradition, and so some of the um, some of the ideas that were were influential for someone like Ezra Pound aren't necessarily found in these poets, uh, but they have some other really valuable ideas that they're sharing. From Tu Mu. So Tumu, this is a very short one, but just think about like the color and the, the, how vivid these lines are. Snowy coats and snowy crests and beaks of blue jade, flocks above the fish in the brook and dart at their own shadows, and startled flight show up far back against the green hills, the blossoms of a whole pear tree shed by the evening wind. <laughs> and it, it's just such a startling and vivid image that we get from that poem. That was Egrets from Tumu. And then uh, a farewell poem also from Tumu. Passion too deep seems like none. While we drink, nothing shows but the smile which will not come. 
the wax candles feel, suffer at partings. Their tears drip for us till the sky brightens. And then the, the most powerful single poem was one by Li Xiang Yin. This is not that poem. This is a different one. Uh, he had a series of what were called untitled poems. And so this Li Xiang Yin, of all the poets, he was one that, that really struck me. He seemed to have poetry that emphasized romantic love, uh, whether with a wife or with a, like a courtesan. Or um, it, It's suggested in the notes that he may have written some of these to a noble woman who had become a, a nun, a, a Taoist nun. And so this gives kind of a hint of that. The east wind sighs, the fine rains come, beyond the pool of water lilies, the noise of faint thunder. A gold toad gnaws the lock. Open it, burn the incense. A tiger of jade pulls the rope. Draw from the well and escape. Chia's daughter peeped through the screen when Han the clerk was young. The goddess of the river left her pillow for the great prince of Wei. Never let your heart open with spring flowers. One inch of love is an inch of ashes. <laughs> it's just like, whew. So, I, I, the, Li Shang Yin, I was really interested in. And this last one, the pattern lute, uh, there was a page plus introduction to it, and then a page plus, uh, almost two pages of commentary on, I think it's, it's like eight lines of poetry. Fantastic. This is the pattern lute. Mere chance that the patterned lute has fifty strings. String and fret, one by one, recall the blossoming years. Chuang Tzu dreamed at sunrise that a butterfly lost its way. Wang Ti bequeathed his spring passion to the night jar. The moon is full on the vast sea, a tear on the pearl. On blue mountain, the sun warms, a smoke issues from the jade. Did it wait, this mood, to mature with hindsight? In a trance from the beginning, then, as now. And I, I read that, I was startled. I think I read that poem like three times today. I, I reread the commentary multiple times. And just like each line has like multiple allusions, images. It's just, it's brilliant how compact poetry is, how startling it can be, the, the, the feelings it engenders, the, the visions it engenders, the sense, um, the sound. It's just such a... Uh, sensual in the term of like using our five senses uh th th this was an all-time volume it's one i'm excited to come back to uh probably later this year <laughs> later this month later this week uh especially li shang yin and uh tu mu um the, the sensibility from them was really interesting uh so this was poems of the late tang some different uh poetry Obviously, uh, some of it references some of the, the Taoist thought from the uh, Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. Uh, there, there did seem to be some, like, Confucian thought um, from the Analects. And, again, I just... Uh, my favorite color is green, and so as a kid, I always loved the Penguin Green Bar <laughs> books. Uh, earlier, I think it was in February, I put up a review of Pronsa, an anthology of troubadour poetry, maybe January. And the sensibilities here were very similar to the uh, late Taang. Highly uh, vivid, highly sensual, uh, a sing-song quality. What I learned about the Chinese uh, poetry was that the, the, the way it works in line by line is similar to the way English poetry has often been written line by line, where there's like, an, you know, the thought ends on the line. The thought ends on the line. Um, there, there's definitely a sense of like influence on French poetry. So... Uh, Baudelaire was mentioned at one point, Flowers of Evil, Les Fleurs de Mal. I thought I saw hints of like some of Paul Verlaine's ideas in these poems, and um, maybe even Ovid. Not not necessarily all of Ovid's works, but maybe from the Amores, which can be found in the uh, the erotic poems, the Penguin Classics erotic poems. But overall, this Poems of the Late Tang is one of my new favorite volumes of poetry. Uh, I, like I said, I'm very excited to reread it. I'll probably be like lending it to my wife to read. I'll read some of these to my daughters. I just, it was truly astounding. So I hope everybody's well. I hope everybody's safe. I hope this is a great start to your weeks, wherever you are. And uh, I'll be back, you know, probably I'm, I'm working through some poetry, but I'm working through a lot of other stuff this month, this week. And thank you, everyone.